Prior to becoming the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky played the president in a comedy on TV. Here's what else you may not have known about Ukraine's comedian turned wartime leader. Volodymyr Zelensky was born in Krivitry, a city in eastern Ukraine, in 1978. His family is Jewish and had witnessed horrors during World War II. According to a video shared by the Kyiv Post on YouTube, the president narrated his story when he met Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and revealed that his grandfather was the only one who managed to survive during the Holocaust. The three brothers of Zelensky's grandfather, their parents, and other members of the family were shot by German occupants who invaded Ukraine. When Zelensky declared that he was going to be a part of the 2019 elections, he received backlash from other Jewish people in Ukraine. His critics were afraid. A Ukrainian rabbi, Shemoyl Kamenizky, explained, They said he should not run because we will have pogroms here again in two years if things go wrong. Still, the backlash was unexpected because religion was hardly discussed during the elections. Furthermore, Ukraine had a Jewish prime minister in 2019, Volodymyr Goisman. However, according to Kamenizky, certain members of the Jewish community were terrified of attracting attention. The rabbi explained, they thought that if it is too big, it will just cause anti-Semitism. For his part, Volodymyr Zelensky didn't focus on his background, but ensured that he was transparent about it during the elections. He said, The fact that I am a Jew is about the 20th question among my characteristics. As a young man, Volodymyr Zelensky was intrigued by comedy. He was particularly interested in exploring improv and sketch comedy and was a fan of a popular show called KVN that welcomed participants from across the old Soviet Union to entertain their audiences. Volodymyr Zelensky was just 17 years old when he joined the Krivi Ree squad as a budding comic. Later, he worked with his friends to start a comedy troupe known as the 95th Quarter, or Quartal 95. The name was a reference to an area in their city. Zelensky studied law at the Kyiv National Economic University and graduated in 2000, three years after he started Quartal 95. By 2003, the comedy troupe had ventured into television and was producing TV shows. However, Zelensky's mom wasn't happy about her son's decision to chase a career as a comic and hoped that he would work as a lawyer instead. Zelensky was undeterred and continued working as an entertainer, participating in tours and performing for his audiences. Volodymyr Zelensky had to be patient while trying to make a name for himself in the entertainment space. It would be years before he would achieve success in the competitive industry and become a household name. He worked as an actor and his films were often made in Russian, a move that allowed him to reach more people. According to Forbes Ukraine, by the year 2012, Zelensky's company was doing well for itself and its income was reportedly $15 million. Zelensky has worn a number of hats in the past and has worked as an actor, producer, writer, and director. Some of his films from the comedy genre include a 2018 film titled Me, You, He, She, the 2014 movie Love in Vegas, and a TV film that was released back in 2005 called The Three Musketeers. Olena Zelenska, the First Lady of Ukraine, said in an interview with the Diplomatic Courier that she wants to use her position to talk about social causes close to her heart. She said that she aimed to learn as much as she could by interacting with First Ladies from other countries, such as Canada, France, Israel, and Japan, telling the outlet, We should care about the issues that concern the whole world – health, education, gender equality. She added that as a parent, she's quite invested in children's nutrition and its connection to both their health and education. This prompted the First Lady to work with Ukraine's ministries to focus on a new school nutrition program for students across the country. Zelenska told Diplomatic Courier, the program can improve their health so that they can improve their learning. According to a report by OnePlus One, the State Food and Consumer Service conducted inspections in Ukrainian schools and discovered that there was a rise in the amount of unsafe food items present in schools across the country. Zelenska's nutrition program aimed to introduce reforms in Ukrainian schools to tackle the issue on a larger scale. She was quoted as saying, Five days a week, children spend almost all day away from home and cannot control what they eat and what they buy in the school cafeteria. Volodymyr Zelensky's big break on television was 2015's Servant of the People, a TV show where he played the role of a high school teacher. The plot of the show is intriguing. The teacher becomes a popular figure among the Ukrainian public after they watch a YouTube video of him speaking at length against corruption. The teacher is ultimately chosen to lead Ukraine as its president after receiving more than 60% of the votes. 
The TV show was produced by Zelensky's company, Quartel 95. Its team made the conscious decision to highlight corruption in the country while openly mocking Ukraine's political elite. Zelensky told Foreign Policy, The best way to make sure Ukrainians don't come to accept the current state of affairs as normal is to put these political absurdities in a new format. The TV show was wildly popular and bigwigs in the TV industry got involved. Fox Studios bought adaptation rights and Netflix decided to acquire the show and stream it for subscribers around the world. Now, I'm very popular in USA. <laughs> the popularity of Servant of the People inspired the team behind Quartal 95 to form a political party called the Servant of the People. Volodymyr Zelensky rose to the challenge in 2018 and declared that he would be running for president. His campaign was unlike any other. As a comic, Zelensky was often spotted at tours around Ukraine where he made it a point to crack jokes on his opponents. He declared that he would fight corruption in the country if he was chosen as the next president. Additionally, he embraced social media to talk about his campaign. It worked. Zelensky won over 73% of the votes and was sworn in as the president in May 2019. Zelensky made several promises during the campaign and said he would work hard to resolve differences with the Russian government and bring peace to the Donbas, a disputed region in eastern Ukraine. Every time Zelensky speaks Russian, the crowd here start to boo and to say shame. He didn't really specify how he would achieve his goals or overcome the difficulties that his predecessors had faced, but still impressed Ukrainian voters. Not everyone was thrilled when it was announced that Volodymyr Zelensky was going to be Ukraine's next president, and several individuals expressed their doubts about his ability to lead Ukraine. Zelensky told the Ukrainian public after winning the election in 2019, I promise I will never let you down. A journalist and researcher from Kyiv, Olga Tokaruk, said that Zelensky was simply chosen because he was recognizable to Ukrainians. She also added that the comedian-turned-presidential candidate made vague promises and didn't have a concrete electoral program. Meanwhile, an international relations professor from the University of Melbourne, Sarah Mager, pointed out that the Ukrainian public was frustrated with the government and no longer wanted a small number of rich people leading them. Mager added, Zelensky represented a radical shift away from that oligarchic power that had a stranglehold on Ukrainian politics. Additionally, Moscow's reporter for The New Yorker, Joshua Yaffa, told NPR in a conversation that Volodymyr Zelensky had an advantage during the elections. He said, It was clear the Ukrainian people were desperate for an alternative, any alternative. And Zelensky showed up on the political scene and benefited from his lack of experience, frankly. President Volodymyr Zelensky is a lot more interested in communicating with his fellow Ukrainians on social media than he is in engaging with the press. In his first year as president, Zelensky mostly avoided traditional media outlets. This was also a trend that was observed during the elections, when Zelensky often preferred to communicate on platforms such as YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter instead of talking to journalists. Local media outlets weren't pleased and alleged that the president was running away from questions. The one exception was a press marathon of sorts that was held in October 2019. Zelensky started speaking to members of the press from 10 a.m. and continued engaging with around 300 reporters until well past midnight, dealing with over 500 questions. Even during the 2022 Russian-Ukrainian crisis, Volodymyr Zelensky regularly posted on his social media accounts on platforms such as Twitter and Instagram to ensure that he was interacting directly with the public and keeping them updated. Early in his presidency, Volodymyr Zelensky was a part of a phone call in July 2019 that would be instrumental in Donald Trump's first impeachment. That we had, uh, I think, good uh, phone call. It was normal. We spoke about many things. In the phone call, the Ukrainian president requested Trump send more aid from the U.S., to which Trump said that he needed Zelensky to investigate Democrats as a, quote, favor. Before Trump was impeached, the U.S. House of Representatives claimed that Trump allegedly held on to millions of dollars in military aid that were meant for Ukraine. The U.S. House went on to claim that Trump withheld the military aid in order to pressure Zelensky to state that he was launching an investigation into Trump's political rival, Joe Biden. According to ABC News, 
Trump apparently held on to as much as $400 million that was earmarked to help Ukraine, and later claimed that he didn't do anything wrong. Also, Zelensky tried his best to arrange a White House meeting with Trump so that the United States would be seen as an ally of Ukraine in confronting Russian aggression. If this way will help Ukraine, I'm ready for next call with Mr. Trump. However, Zelensky never succeeded in arranging the meeting. He is on better terms with Biden and even visited the White House in 2021. During the 2019 election campaign, Volodymyr Zelensky had assured his fellow Ukrainians that he would work on mending things with Russia and figure out a way to move forward. However, this was more complicated than he realized. Zelensky tried his best to initiate dialogue with Russian President Vladimir Putin in order to find a solution to Russia's ongoing occupation of Ukraine's Crimea and certain regions in eastern Ukraine. Unfortunately, Russia didn't participate in the talks and didn't seem to want to implement a permanent ceasefire or call off its troops from Ukraine. Right before the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine took place, Zelensky spoke about how Putin had ignored his requests, saying, I initiated a telephone call with the President of the Russian Federation. Result? Silence. Zelensky went on to add that Russia had around 200,000 troops, as well as thousands of combat vehicles on Ukraine's borders. Additionally, Zelensky requested Russia to avoid going into war, saying, Who can stop the war? People. These people are among you, I am sure. We just speaking about our independence. That's it. That we are deciding what we want. We are deciding what we'll do. Prior to the 2022 invasion by Russia, members of the public weren't pleased with Zelensky. His approval rating even dropped to 25% by October 2021. The main reason was the fact that the president had not managed to find a solution for the conflict in Donbass, coupled with economic issues such as a rise in the cost of gas, electricity, and water. Olga Olenikova, director of the Ukraine Democracy Initiative at the University of Technology, Sydney, said in a statement, People are really not happy with him at the moment. Additionally, corruption challenges still plagued the government, something that didn't help Zelensky's reputation. There was another problem. Ukraine had seen a common trend of people quickly losing faith in a new president because voters often had extremely high expectations for what Zelensky could accomplish and found his lack of tangible achievements unacceptable. Additionally, former candidates had also often disappointed their voters by not addressing their election pledges after being sworn in. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about notable world leaders are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.